What will the Tennessee Titans offense look like in 2024 from a statistical point of view? That's what I wanted to dive into with this video. So I'm gonna break it all down into three levels, the conservative projection, the realistic projection, and the aggressive best case scenario projection. This is the Music City Audible. Let's get into it. Oh, welcome everyone to another episode of the Music City Audible podcast presented by Broadway Sports Media in partnership with 440 Sports. I'm Justin Graver doing a solo pod today, projecting out statistics for the Titans offense in 2024. Thank you all for tuning in. If you're watching this on YouTube, we really appreciate it. If you're just listening to the audio version, Highly recommend you head over to the Music City Audible YouTube channel and watch this one as a video because it's very numbers heavy, it's very math heavy, and I'm going to put all these numbers up on the screen so it'll be a lot easier to follow along if you're watching versus just listening. So if you are watching on YouTube, I appreciate it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and turn on alerts so you get a notification every time we drop a new video. All right, let's get into some of these projections here. And what we're looking at is... We're projecting out what the Titans offense is going to look like based on numbers, based on calculations. This is a very mathematical, heavy approach. I'm not just coming up with numbers off the top of my head and saying, oh, I think Will Levis will throw for about 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns because like, I have mathematical calculations to back up these projections. So I think it's a very in-depth way to look at things, and I think it's a very realistic way to look at things. Like I said, this is going to be very math heavy. This is very calculated. This is based on rates, like number of plays per game, pass run splits, yards per attempt, touchdown percentage by the quarterback, rushing share, uh, target share, receiving touchdown share. Like you plug all these numbers in and then it spits out the, the total stats for you. So that's how I got to these numbers. And I will explain um, after I give all the projections, I'll sort of explain the math behind it. Because if you're just here to see what the projections are, I totally appreciate that and I totally get it. And I will let you see those first and then we'll do the math second. And also you can use the uh, the chapters in the YouTube um, timeline here to skip a, skip around if you just want to see certain projections. So uh, let's get into the projections now. Before I do that, let me remind you that this episode is brought to you by Sinkers Beverages in East Nashville and Bluegrass Beverages in Hendersonville. Head over to the sinkersbeverages.com website or check out the link in this podcast description to join the in crowd. In crowd members get access to allocated wines and spirits, exclusive events, early access to barrel releases, and more. So check out sinkersbeverages.com today. Um, a few disclaimers off the top. Number one, these projections are based on every player involved playing all 17 games, which if you've ever watched a season of the NFL, you know that that's probably unfortunately not how it's going to shake out. So this is sort of a, a even the conservative approach is a best case scenario in terms of everybody playing every game this season. A, a few other disclaimers here. It's really hard to project out what Brian Callahan's offense in Tennessee is going to look like because... We don't know what kind of run pass ratio he's going to utilize. We don't know what kind of pace his offense is going to play with. Yeah, we can look at Cincinnati and use that as sort of a guideline. But Zach Taylor was the head coach, an offensive minded guy who called the plays. So it was really his offense calling the shots there. And obviously Callahan had a lot of input. And over five years, I'm sure that input continued to grow as they continued to trust each other and Taylor continued to trust uh, what Brian Callahan was bringing to that offense. But again, we don't know what it's going to look like in Tennessee. Now that Callahan's calling the shots, he's got a new group of weapons. Cincinnati never had two running backs like Tajay Spears and Tony Pollard who could both handle a huge workload. Um, he did have a great trio of wide receivers, which he'll have in Tennessee. So we can use some of those like target share numbers to figure some of that stuff out. But it's just really hard to project what Brian Callahan's offense is going to look like with the Titans. So this is all kind of with a little bit of a grain of salt here as I'm sort of piecing things together. So this is all hopefully going to be within a range of potential outcomes that I'm going to get close to. Obviously, I'm not expecting to be 100% accurate here, but just to give everyone an idea of what the stats could look like. So again, I've got three approaches here, the conservative approach, the aggressive best case scenario approach, and then what I'm calling the realistic projection, which I think is more in line with what we'll see this year. All right, without further ado, let's look at the conservative projection here. All right, so you can see my spreadsheet now. This is the conservative projection. Like I said, I'll explain the math behind it all in a moment after I get the numbers out of the way. Let's just start with Will Levis here. I've got him projected at 60% completion percentage, 565 pass attempts, 339 completions on those pass attempts for 3,584 yards. 
That 6.3 yards per attempt, I've got him at 23 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, and yes, 58 sacks. And that's based on a touchdown percentage of 4%, interception percentage of 2.5%, and a sack percentage of 9%. Rushing, I have him with 38 carries for 114 yards and two touchdowns on 3.0 yards per carry. So pretty modest, pretty conservative numbers there for Will Levis. 6.3 yards per attempt, not very high. 3,584 passing yards. That's about 211 passing yards per game. So again, not great numbers, not huge production. 6.3 yards per attempt. You may think that's very low, and it is generally pretty low. Um, But that's what Joe Burrow was averaging at the time of his injury last year. So not out of the question for a Brian Callahan quarterback to average 6.3 yards per attempt. All right, when it comes to the running backs, I've got Tajay Spears, 201 carries for 806 yards. Tony Pollard, 179 carries for 716 yards. That assumes a 45% rushing share for Tajay Spears and a 40% rushing share for Tony Pollard. Uh, Gave them both 4.0 yards per attempt because, again, this is the conservative projection. This is the floor projection, the the lowest level we think this could be, the floor for the the Titans offense this year. Um, With a 3.5 rushing touchdown percentage for Spears, that would give him seven rushing touchdowns. With a 3.0 rushing touchdown percentage for Pollard, that would give him five rushing touchdowns. I gave Spears a 12% target share. That gives him 68 targets. 70% catch rate gives him 48 catches. Uh, 7.0 yards per catch gives him 333 receiving yards on two receiving touchdowns with a 10% receiving touchdown share. Tony Pollard, I gave him 179 rush attempts for 716 yards at 4.0 yards per carry and five rushing touchdowns on a 3% rushing touchdown share. I gave him a 7% target share and a 70% catch rate, which comes out to 40 targets, 28 catches, 7.0 7.0 yards per catch gives him 194 receiving yards and another two receiving touchdowns there. The rest of the running backs combined, marginal numbers there, but you got to include it because you know it's not just going to be Spears, Pollard, and Levis getting all of the rushing yards. When it comes to the receivers, I also gave them a handful of carries. You know, there's always going to be those jet sweeps and things of that nature. And maybe some of those carries won't go to the top three receivers, but I think these numbers are negligible overall. So I'm going to skip over them. You can see them if you're looking at this on your screen. I gave DeAndre Hopkins a 20% target share, Calvin Ridley a 22% target share, and Tyler Boyd a 17% target share. Stay tuned for later in the video. I'll explain where those numbers come from. But that comes out to 113 targets, 66 catches for DeAndre Hopkins for 787 receiving yards, 12.0 yards per catch, and six receiving touchdowns. Calvin Ridley, I gave a 22% target share, like I said, is 124 targets, 68 catches for 855 receiving yards on 12.5 yards per catch and seven receiving touchdowns for Calvin Ridley. Tyler Boyd, 96 targets, 61 receptions for 666 yards, 11.0 yards per catch and two receiving touchdowns. Traylon Burks and and the rest of the wide receivers, pretty negligible numbers. You can see them on your screen if you're watching along. Skip over to Chiga Conquo, who I gave a 12% target share to, 68 targets, 41 catches for 448 receiving yards and three receiving touchdowns. And then Josh Wiley and the rest of the tight ends will also have some receiving yards in there. So this is based on a 63 play per game offensive pace with a 60% pass percentage and a 40% run percentage. I got those numbers based. I mean, I, I sort of just, this is sort of arbitrary, but keeping it conservative, I thought the Titans would run fewer plays maybe than what Brian Callahan is hoping for. When Brian Callahan was offensive coordinator of the Bengals for five years, they averaged 65.9 plays per game over the course of five seasons, just under 66 plays per game. The NFL average last year was 63, just about plays per game. So I think 63 plays per game for the Titans is, you know, if Brian Callahan wants to run at a 66 play per game pace, but the offense can't sustain drives as well, or the defense isn't getting off the field as much, they may run fewer plays. And that's how I got to 63 plays per game. 60% 60% pass to a run split. Brian Callahan over his five years in Cincinnati was at 61% pass to just under 39% run. So I think 60-40, calling it even here, slightly better running back tandem than, than what anything Callahan ever had in Cincinnati. So a slight uptick in the run percentage there. Uh, that's how I got those numbers. Um, when we talk about sack percentage, which is a number in this chart, um, we have a 63 play per game pace and 60% of those plays are dropbacks. To get to the actual pass attempts, 
we got to figure out how many of those dropbacks are scrambles and how many of those dropbacks are sacks. So I have Will Levis's scramble rate from last year, 3.16%. I think that takes a slight downtick with better pass protection, with better passing concepts that get the ball out of his hands faster. Gave him a 3% scramble rate. That would be 19 scrambles over the course of the season. And I took his sack percentage down a little bit. It was at 9.47% last year, playing behind, obviously, a very bad offensive line with very subpar receiving options outside of DeAndre Hopkins. So a 9.47 sack percentage, that's very high. I gave him a 9% sack percentage in this conservative projection, which is still pretty high. Over the course of his five years with the Bengals, you know, Brian Callahan was working with mostly pretty bad offensive lines, and even they had a sack percentage of just 7.2%. So a 9% sack percentage, pretty high, but this is the conservative approach. You know, Titans offensive line on the left side looks strong, but the right side may not be totally fixed. So we'll keep it at 9% for this projection, which is where you get 58 sacks. And that's how you get the number of pass attempts. If you got 40% run percentage, that gives you the number of rushing attempts also at 63 plays per game. I've got the Titans in at 448 rushing attempts for the season. That's significantly higher than the average for Brian Callahan uh, for his time in Cincinnati, which was only 402 rushing attempts per game, but um, or per se- 402 rushing attempts per season. But it is also slightly below the NFL average from last season, which was 456. Uh, the lowest team, the team that ran the ball the fewest number of times, was at 359. So a pretty big uptick from there. That gives you 448 rush attempts, comes out to 26.3 rush attempts per game. We've come out to 33.3 pass attempts per game. Again, the 6.3 yards per attempt. That's what Joe Burrow averaged last season. So that's what we're using for our floor. Um, And that gives you 5,334 yards total on the season. That's 300 yards below what the NFL averaged last year. Um, It's 200 yards fewer than what Brian Callahan's teams averaged over five years with Cincinnati. So this is our project low end projection. It puts the Titans in the sort of the bottom third offenses in the league. Uh, puts Will Levis probably in the bottom third quarterbacks in the league with only 23 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, 3,500 passing yards, almost 3,600 passing yards. No thousand yard receiver for this offense. No thousand yard rusher. Um, and that is the conservative projection. All right, let's move on to the aggressive projection now here. And this one we are upticking basically all the numbers across the board and decreasing all the bad numbers across the board. So start again with plays per game where I bumped the Titans up to 67. Remember, we were at 63 in the conservative projection. That's about one play per game more than what the Bengals ran last year under Brian Callahan. If we look at the Bengals' history under Brian Callahan, though, they did have seasons where they ran upwards of 67 plays per game. 2019 and 2020, both of those seasons, they were above 67 plays per game. So it is within the realm of possibility to have that be the number of plays per game. I gave a slight decrease to the pass percentage and a slight increase to the run percentage here um, just because we're looking at a best case scenario. The Titans are probably winning a little bit more games. They're probably leading late in games a little more often if the offense is this productive, if they're running this many plays. So a slight uptick in run percentage there as they try to run out the clock in some of these games. A huge decrease in the sack percentage. Remember, we were at 9% last time we looked at this um, in the conservative projection. For the aggressive projection, we're going down to 6.5% sack percentage. That takes us down to 44 sacks, increases our number of attempts, and we already increased the number of dropbacks because we increased the plays per game. I took the scramble percentage up a little bit here because uh, Will Levis, if things are humming well and he's seeing the offense clearly, he might have a chance to run for some yards that he wasn't seeing before. If his sack percentage goes down, you know, some of those sacks turn into scrambles here. So that's why we're at 4.5% now for the sa- for the scramble percentage. Um, so let's get into what these numbers, what these uh, changes to the pace numbers do to the overall stats. I also increased Will Levis's yards per attempt quite a bit up to 74 That obviously will increase the number of yards. I increased his completion percentage up to 64.43%. And this one I actually got to by increasing the catch percentage of the receivers and tight ends and running backs across the board. Pushing all of those up obviously increases the completion percentage. That's why it's such a funky percentage here, 0.43%. So all of that together gives you 598 pass attempts for Will Levis, 385 completions, 44 sacks, 4,399 passing yards on the season. That's about 260 yards per game. Again, the 7.4 yards per attempt. I bumped his touchdown percentage up to 6%. I dropped the interception percentage down to 1.5%. We've already covered the sack percentage. So that gives you 36 passing touchdowns and just 9 interceptions. 
Um, I, I bumped up the rushing yards per carry. That gives him 42 attempts for 190 rushing yards and four touchdowns. Looking at the running backs here, I bumped up the yards per carry here. They're already getting more attempts because the Titans are running more plays per game at a slightly higher rushing percentage. So at 4.2 yards per carry for Spears and 4.5 yards per carry for Pollard with the same rushing share here, that gives Spears 224 carries for 940 yards, Pollard 199 carries for 895 yards. I bumped up their rushing touchdown percentage as well, which gives Spears 11 touchdowns, Tony Pollard 9 touchdowns, that's on the ground. When it comes to receiving, I gave a slight decrease to Tajay Spears' uh, target share so that I could give Traylon Burks a slight bump. Um, but we are going with 11.5% target share now for Spears. That's 69 targets. An improved 75% catch rate gives him 52 catches. An improved 7.5 yards per catch gives him 387 receiving yards and four receiving touchdowns. Tony Pollard, 199 carries for 895 yards. So again, we're keeping with that very much 1A, 1B backfield split. And the disclaimer here when it comes to the running backs is I don't know how Brian Callahan's going to use these running backs. Tony Pollard could be the 1A. Tajay Spears could be the 1B. You could flip these numbers. The RB3 may get a lot more carries. Will Levis may not run as much. The the receivers may not get any carries um, outside of some a few handful of end arounds. Maybe one of these guys establishes themselves and takes over a 60% rushing share. But for now, we're going to keep this 1A, 1B split here, 45 to 40. So anyway, Pollard, 199 attempts for 895 yards on 4.5 yards per carry. And again, the slight bump in rushing touchdown percentage gives him nine rushing touchdowns. In the receiving game, 7% target share gives him 42 targets. An improved 78% catch percentage gives him 33 catches. And an improved 8.0 yards per catch gives him 261 receiving yards and four receiving touchdowns. So higher numbers across the board, which is what you'd expect from the aggressive project projection. Still no thousand yard rusher. But again, you make this number 50% and you make this number 35% and bang, you got a thousand yard season for Pollard. So these numbers, you know, you got to give, take them with a slight range on both sides here this offense could have a thousand yard rusher it just depends on how the carries are split um even at the and i mean that by saying this offense at these rate stats could produce a thousand yard rusher if the the distribution was slightly changed all right moving over to the receivers again hopkins 22 percent target share that is bumped up from where we were in the conservative approach ridley 23 percent target share that is bumped up from where we were in the conservative approach and Tyler Boyd, 15% target share. That is a downtick from where we were in the conservative approach because I wanted to give an idea of what it would look like aggressively. You're attacking maybe more downfield. You're le giving less targets to the slot player and more targets to the, to the two elite outside receivers. So that's why the change in those target shares. That gives Hopkins 132 targets. A higher catch percentage gives him 80 catches for 1,003 yards on a higher yards per reception of 12.5. Nine receiving touchdowns now that Will Levis' touchdown percentage has bumped up. There's more touchdowns to go around. So although the receiving touchdown share didn't change, now Hopkins is at nine touchdowns when he was at six in the conservative projection. Calvin Ridley, 138 targets, 83 receptions for 1,114 receiving yards on 13.5 yards per catch and 11 receiving touchdowns. Tyler Boyd, Still gets 90 targets despite the drop in target share. 61 catches for 702 receiving yards on 11 and a half yards per catch and three receiving touchdowns. Um, Chiga Conquo in this projection, 72 targets on an improved 65% catch rate, 47 catches, 583 receiving yards and four receiving touchdowns. So that is the aggressive projection. That puts the Titans at 6,500 total yards. That's just 300 yards shy of the league leader last season. It puts them at 5.8 yards per play, which is well above the five-year average of Brian Callahan's Bengals. The 6,500 total yards is 1,000 yards above Brian Callahan's Bengals. And the big difference here isn't so much the passing success. It's the rushing success. Brian Callahan, over those five years, only averaged, his Bengals teams only averaged 15, uh, just under 1,600 rushing yards. This has the Titans at 2,174 rushing yards. Brian Callahan's Bengals averaged just under 4,000 passing yards. This is 4,400 passing yards for a season. So this is a big uptick, and the yards per carry is a huge uptick. The yards per attempt, pass attempt, is slightly higher than what Will Levis was at last season, slightly higher than what Brian Callahan's five-year average with the Bengals was at. So 
That is the aggressive projection. We have one more now. This is the realistic projection. We split the difference in the plays per game here, brought it down to 65, which is just under where Brian Callahan was, put it back to a 60-40 pass run split, brought the scramble percentage back to 3% where it was before, but the sack percentage comes down from 9% to 7.5%. So all that gives you 593 pass attempts for Will Levis, 373 completions. Again, the completion percentage derived mostly from the catch rate of the receivers. So 62.78% completion percentage, uh, 50 sacks with that 7.5% sack rate. So still kind of high on the sack numbers, um, which I think is probably going to be a thing for Will Levis's career. He's just going to be a little bit higher sack guy. That doesn't mean he's not going to be a great quarterback. It's just one area that you're always going to have to worry about. Um, but at 6.7 yards per attempt now, which is a nice modest you know, mid spot between the 6.3 of the conservative projection and the 7.4 of the aggressive projection, 6.7 yards per attempt comes out to 3,977 passing yards. That is an average of 233 passing yards per 234 passing yards per game. I bumped the touchdown percentage again, split the difference, put it at 5% interception percentage, split the difference, put it at 2%. That gives him 30 touchdowns to 12 interceptions. Again, I think these, this is a very realistic projection almost 4,000 passing yards 30 passing touchdowns 12 interceptions that that passing yardage number would put him a little bit above league average which makes sense it's right in line with where Brian Callahan was over his five years with the Cincinnati Bengals 3,900 yards a season there um, so 3,977 just about in line with that Again, just about 200 yards above the league average. Completion percentage is actually still a little below league average, still well below where Brian Callahan was with his five years with the Bengals, where it was at 65.56% over those five years. Um, and keep in mind, that was with not just Joe Burrow. You know, a lot of backup quarterbacks have played with Joe Burrow missing time. Andy Dalton was the starter in 2019 when Brian Callahan got to Cincinnati. So I think 62%, 62.7%. For a guy who only threw 59% completion percentage last year, 62.7% is a nice uptick, but it's still, you know, there's a lot of improvement that could be made there. So if we get the rest of these pace numbers with a 65% completion percentage, all these numbers are going to go up even more. But I think this is a nice realistic place to land at for Will Levis's projections. Just under 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, 12 interceptions in what we expect to be a pass-heavy offense with a ton of good, reliable weapons, receivers and running backs, and even you know a tight end that we're very high on with Chiga Conquo. So that's why I landed, landed there for Will Levis's um, numbers. With the running backs, we got Tajay Spears at 208 rushing attempts now for 852 yards. Tony Pollard, 185 rush attempts for 794 yards. Gave Spears a 4.1 yard per carry average here. I gave Pollard a 4.3 yard per carry average. But 4.3, I think that's still kind of modest, actually, for what Tony Pollard could average. But maybe it's 4.5 yards per carry on fewer carries, and maybe Spears ends up getting more carries. And if you're worried that we still don't have a 1,000-yard rusher here, you got over 1,600 yards between the two of them here. I think you'll take that all day if you're a Titans fan. This gives Tajay Spears nine rushing touchdowns, Tony Pollard seven rushing touchdowns. In the receiving game, Spears 71 targets, 51 catches for 364 yards. Pollard, 42 targets, 31 catches for 234 yards, three receiving touchdowns apiece. If we look at the receivers, this time I evened out the target share between Hopkins and Ridley at 22% apiece, Tyler Boyd 15% again. Um, so that gives each of them, Hopkins and Ridley, 131 targets. Hopkins with a slightly higher catch percentage, just if his targets are more underneath, if Ridley's being targeted more on deep shots, you'd expect the catch percentage to decrease. So Hopkins, 78 catches for 956 yards. But again, if Ridley's being the deep target guy, he's probably got a higher yards per catch. So 74 catches for 930 receiving yards. Uh, they're almost even there. And then Ridley still with a slightly higher receiving touchdown share comes in with nine touchdowns to Hopkins, seven. Tyler Boyd, 89 targets. 58 catches for 636 receiving yards and two receiving touchdowns. Chiga Conquo, 71 targets, 46 catches for 509 receiving yards and four receiving touchdowns. So where does this put the Titans offense? 5,900 total yards. That's a little bit above league average. It's definitely a top, top uh, 10 offense in the NFL here. 5.3 yards per play is higher than the five-year season average with Brian Callahan in Cincinnati. Uh, 5,900 uh, total yards is almost 400 yards more than that average with Cincinnati, but it's still 900 yards fewer than the league leader 
So this doesn't put the Titans as one of the you know top three best offenses in the NFL, but definitely a top third of the league offense, um, you know, a top 10 offense. And I think these numbers feel right to me when I see what the final numbers out, come out to be, you know, like I'm just inputting target share, catch percentage, yards per catch, yards, uh, touchdown percentage, interception percentage, total attempts. And the rest of these numbers get spit back out at me, right, based on the calculations there. So when I put in these, you know, determining factors, the rate factors here that determine all the stats, I I feel like this is pretty reasonable with what I could expect from the Titans this year. No thousand yard receiver here, but two over 900 yards, another over 600 yards, uh, tight end with 500 yards receiving. Like this, this all feels very reasonable. And again, if Hopkins dominates the targets a little bit more than Ridley, then, you know, you put this you plug this in at 25% target share and 19 here, now you've got a thousand yard receiver in DeAndre Hopkins. So that's kind of how you can play with these numbers a little bit. And uh, I think that, again, you have to think of these a little bit as ranges. And if we think of them as ranges, then we could say from the conservative 3,500 yard projection to the aggressive 4,400 yard, that's Will Levis's passing yards, 3,500 passing yards conservative to 4,400 yards in the aggressive that's about the range that I'm expecting. Somewhere in that range. It's a pretty big range, I know. But And then you get the realistic projection, which I think will be more in line with what we expect to see. Now, to come up with this information, I looked at a lot of data. I looked at all the offenses from this past season, passing, rushing, total offense, plays per game, run percentage, pass percentage, yards per play. And I especially looked at what the Bengals did in the five years that they were uh, offensive coordinated by Brian Callahan. So looking at all these numbers, you know, looking at the splits between Jamar Chase, T Higgins and Tyler Boyd in the season when all three were healthy, which was, you know, back in 2022, Chase had a 22% target share, Higgins an 18% target share. But you also have to account for, you know, guys like DeAndre Hopkins, who last season had a 28% target share in this Titans offense. Calvin Ridley with the Jags last year under Nick Holtz, who is now the passing game, who is now the offensive coordinator for the Titans. He was the passing game coordinator for the Jags last year. Calvin Ridley under Nick Holtz had a 22% target share. So I expect that to be something that stays relatively steady. Hopkins at 28%, that's super high. The Titans didn't have very much target competition last year. He was their only real, you know, reliable receiver, and Will Levis and him developed a quick connection. So I don't expect it to be nearly that high again this year. But things like their catch percentage, not just from last season, but their career catch percentage is how, you know, in the realistic projection, I gave a 60% catch percentage to Hopkins, 57% to Ridley. For his career, Hopkins is a 61.5 catch percentage. For his career, Ridley's actually higher, almost 63%. But again, you look at last season when Ridley was at 55.8%. So for the realistic projection, putting him at 57 sort of splits the difference between his career average and last year. Just feels right to me. Um, so certain, there's a lot of numbers that went into this projection, you know, from receiving touchdown share, rushing touchdown percentage, uh, target share, all these numbers, yards per attempt, yards per catch. Again, the yards per catch numbers are pretty low are across the board, too. If you look at what Hopkins has done in his career, what Ridley's done in his career, what Boyd's done in his career, 11.7 for Boyd over here on the outside. This is Jamar Chase. This is T. Higgins. So anyway, a lot of work and a lot of research went into this whole thing. But uh, that is those are my projections. I will post a link to this uh, Google Doc if anyone wants to just click through it and look through it more in-depthly at all the different numbers that are in here. Um, I, I highly encourage you to do so. And again, drop in the comments below any objections you have to these numbers, any questions you have about where I came to some of these numbers, any gripes you have with some of the, the rate stat, the rate determinant factors I use to get here. I would appreciate an open conversation with you guys. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. Make sure you're subscribed to the Music City Audible channel. Give this video a thumbs up and turn on alerts so you get a notification every time we drop a new video. Thanks also to our sponsors, Sinkers Beverages in East Nashville and Bluegrass Beverages in Hendersonville. Like I said at the top, head over to sinkersbeverages.com or check out the link in this podcast description to sign up for the in crowd. In crowd members get access to allocated wines and spirits, early access to barrel releases, exclusive events, and more. So check out sinkersbeverages.com today. All right, that'll do it. Justin and I will be back next week talking about Titans rookie mini camp takeaways and other news updates and things that, that we have going on for this summer. So until then, you all stay safe out there and tighten up. A Broadway Sports Media Production.